Hi everyone, what's up? Josh here, and today we're taking a closer look at the Pietro Flat Burr Grinder from Fiorenzato. Fiorenzato are primarily known for their commercial automatic grinders, so it is interesting to see them venture into the world of manual grinders, much like Matza did late last year, but even more bold is that they've decided to design a vertical flat burr grind. Up until now, 99.99% of hand grinders have all been conical burr grinders, using a range of 38 to 48 mil burrs, whereas the Pietro uses huge 58 mil flat burrs, which are more commonly seen on a Matza Mini, a Compact K3, and even the complete range of Eureka Mignon grinders don't use 58 mil flat burrs. So it is quite a feat. Yet the question does remain, does the expertise in commercial grinders translate to producing a quality and performance driven manual grinder? I'm keen to find out, so let's jump in now and check it out. First, let's take a look at the key features and specifications of the Pietro Flat Burr Grinder. The grind adjustment found on the front, this is a large dial that's stepless, it's easy to use and see what grind setting that you're on. The hopper, this holds a total of 60 grams of beans, which is quite large for a hand grinder. And then there's a retractable crank handle, which is great for storing it and also positioned on the side of the grinder to reduce any effort necessary to rotate the handle whilst grinding. The catch cup, this is magnetically attached, so it won't easily fall off whilst you're grinding. And then when you need to access that grinds chamber for a full clean, it's just a single button push to release the handle. And once you're inside the grinds chamber, you're gonna find those vertically aligned 58 mil flat burrs, which are key to this product. So there are two types of flat burrs that you can get with the Pietro. And the ones that I have here, these are a default bimodal style burrs, which are more commonly associated for espresso brewing. These can also do filter no issues, but there is a pro version burr, and these are designed for a higher uniformity and better grinds distribution, thus more clarity in the cup, and I would say just a better option if you're only brewing filter coffee. And I think now is a good time to mention, before we move on, the RPMs of burrs. And I suppose this translates a lot more into automatic grinders than it does to hand grinders, as we don't really take into account RPMs when we're hand grinding, and it's more like how long is it gonna to take to grind out a full dose. Typical automatic grinders RPMs also differ with burr styles, but I think we've known for a long while that low RPMs do have a positive impact on grind distribution. Hence why so many great automatic grinders now offer variable RPMs. And flat burrs. These are noticeable for having higher RPMs than conical burr grinders. So it's no coincidence that hand grinders miraculously make as good or even better in some cases espresso than automatic grinders do. And they do it with smaller burrs that are always conical at the fraction of the cost. It is that they're leveraging in a large part the low RPMs whilst grinding. Now for this instance, using the Pietro, here stands the opportunity to grind with flat burrs at variable low RPMs, however, I'm not quite ready to count the RPMs whilst I'm hand grinding, but if I were, I know it does stand around the 80 to 100 RPMs, which is a heck of a lot lower than any motor could achieve. Now the grinder uses a large stepped dial to adjust the grind settings, and it moves from zero, one full rotation coarser to 10, and there are four steps found between each number. And I did say it was stepless at the start of this video, but it's sort of a hybrid where it is stepped and it clicks into place on the numbers and on the four steps between each number. Though if you're looking for more precision, you can adjust it so it sits in between each click. And as mentioned, this will grind for all brewing methods, from Turkish coffee, to espresso brewing, to mocha pot, then aeropress, to pour overs, to batch brews, and French press with cold brewing. All right, let's now take a look at the workflow of the Pietro grinder. And in Fiorenzato's own words, this is a hermetically sealed grinder, which is the first I've heard that term hermetically being used for a hand grinder, let alone any other coffee product there, to be honest. It points to the fact that with the hopper lid and the catch cup on, which are connected using O-rings, that inside becomes airtight. And I can see how this might be used in protecting the inner workings of the grinder, especially in high humid areas, or perhaps whilst you're traveling with this grinder, but preserving aromas specifically whilst grinding or storing beans inside the hopper, I see less practicality to that and I haven't really seen the benefits. So if you're more aware of what benefits do come with a hermetically sealed grinder, let me know in the comment section down below. Nonetheless, let's now grab a 
18 gram dose and we'll grind it using a, an espresso setting and see how long it takes. So I've got it on a grind setting of two. Now one of the easiest things to mention about this grinder is it's not really a hand grinder per se. It's a manual grinder, but we're gonna be grinding on the bench. There is a non-slip surface at the base, which is nice. It's A, not gonna scratch up your bench, but B, it allows it to stick on the bench whilst you're grinding. I've tried many different ways. Maybe my hands are small, I don't know. I've tried many different ways to hold this grinder. Whilst grinding, I find it very difficult. So I would suggest almost to anybody getting this grinder, it is just a bench grinder. I'm on a setting of two 18 gram beans. Let's see how we go. Start the clock. Now it's quite easy to crank the handle. All right. I actually don't feel as much resistance to this espresso grinding as I would to another hand grinder where you're grinding horizontally, I suppose. I do find it a little bit difficult to hold down here whilst hand grinding, but it doesn't move around too far. I'm sure some of you at home are maybe counting the revolutions. I don't know. If it does get stuck, you can always wind back and go again. Like so. Feel like we're getting closer. There we go. You know, it's funny, it's actually the hand that you use to hold the grinder, not the crank arm that gets tired, kind of just constantly pushing down. Well, see, your other hand is just getting a workout. It's fine, that's done now, I think. All right. Always just give it a couple of taps. I don't know why, I just do. There's a little bit more in there, there we go. Oh wow, that's like powder. Like it does a, such an excellent job at, uh, Grinding powder. That was a while to grind though, I think like a minute and a half. Now it says that it's a non, like it has very low retention in the grinds, but I do find occasionally there is some up and in, in a, around the burrs and the burr shoot, just a little bit, but that's why I always just give it a little extra tap. And I guess it's no more or less than other hand grinders. Other than the fact I feel like there's just a little bit more to this grinder than other hand grinders. So there is a more availability for uh, grinds to get stuck either in the chute or in the burrs themselves because they're larger burrs. So you're gonna find a little bit more ground uh, grinds in the burrs themselves. But otherwise, like in terms of, I'm actually, that's, whew, I'm actually catching my breath. But in terms of the grind quality, yeah, it looks fantastic. All right, let's now do a flavor comparison for the Pietro grinder. I'm grabbing the Eureka Mignon Manuel for a flat burr comparison. Perhaps not the greatest comparison. It actually has smaller flat burrs at 50 mils. It's the only one I had in the studio. And for a hand grinder comparison, I'm placing in the Kinu Simplicity as it is a high-end grinder at around the same price point. Espresso tasting time. Let's do this. Be interested to see their pro flavor profiles for sure. Let's just get ahead and start. Now, in terms of dialing in just quickly, no issues at all, really. It was actually really quite simple. I, I had it on a setting of two. It ran a little bit slow. It actually like ran slow. So I just took it to one notch past two and it brewed perfectly exactly where I needed it to go. Um, they do suggest there is a micron setting. I think it's 15 microns per adjustment. I don't know whether that was per click or, um, because there's a movement between the clicks. So I don't know whether it's each notch is 15, so each click would be 30 or otherwise, but uh, I didn't really take a huge uh, amount of uh, interest in that so much as just dialing it in, just finding the clicks, seeing what works. I've stirred these espressos, let's just taste them. First one up.
All right, this is an Ethiopian coffee. It had uh, caramel, nougat, apricot, honey. Ooh, second taste was nice. That's rich though. Full bodied and rich and heavy, I didn't expect that. It's quite a fast running shot as well for all of them. They ran, I uh, put 18 grams in, pulled 36 grams out and around 22 seconds. So uh, it's quite rich and full bodied for a fast shot. Oh wow, this is much brighter. A little cleaner on the palate too, just like this one, as I said, was like full bodied, rich, heavy. A little bit more acidity in this, probably not nice acidity, but but it's way cleaner on the palate. So it just kind of like cleanses the palate almost. Much more sweetness in there. Yeah, a little bit more apricot -y. Definitely a lot more apricot -y than this. This was, this was like heavy caramels, quite rich, full bodied. Like that nougat, like I mentioned, is just kind of jumping out. This I can picture is like more apricot -y, more stewed apricots though. It's not like bright, fruity apricots. It's just the coffee itself, but yeah, there's just need that apricot sweetness to it. It's always nice to get a contrast between coffees straight up, because then you kind of know the, uh, the spectrum of flavors in the coffee itself. Uh, ooh. A lot of sweetness. Very nice velvety texture. Like this one was full bodied, rich, heavy. Full bodied, like when I say full bodied, it just comes in with all the flavor. It's quite, kind of has everything in it. Carries through to the end quite a lot. This one was super clean, straight off the palate, straight back, leaving kind of like that apricot acidity and sweetness on the tongue, but very clean. This one, it's velvety, real velvety. Wow, like a lot of sweetness and, and there's no acidity like in this one at all. Like it is, it is a really balanced acid, acid, excuse me. It's a really balanced acidity and sweetness. Uh, like I can't really pick out the acidity as much as it's kind of like weaved inside the sweetness, which is really nice. Like this is like drinking apricot juice right now. Yeah, that's really, that's really delicious, whatever that is. And that texture is just beautiful. That's the thing that jumps out at me the most with this coffee is that texture is incredible. Wow, woo. All right, well, I mean, whatever this grinder is, I've, I've spoken it up enough. Let me just quickly hit these last two again. Yeah, yeah, just so heavy, full bodied and rich and clean. Like these are almost opposites. Full bodied, rich, heavy, jam packed full of flavor, complex, this, Acidity forwards, bright, clean, more transparent in that note of apricot, whereas this is more complicated with its um, kind of nougat caramel he's mixed in. And this is just, this is just like biting into a fresh apricot. I don't know, like that's the contrast between them all. This is, this is really nuanced, but, uh, but has clarity as well, which is great. All right. This was red. The Pietro was red. The Eureka was white and the Kinu was blue. It's just an easy way to remember it. Red, white, and blue. Man, I would love, I would love to just place my favorite cup right now as the Pietro. If this is red, this is amazing. Like this is 58 mil flat burrs at low RPMs, just proving what is capable at these low RPMs with flat burrs. Like this is just incredible. Let's hope this is the red cup. And it is. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Wow, that's so impressive, the flavor out of that. Like these, these I'm not impressed with as much. Only not, not like that they've made terrible coffee, but like I'm familiar with these flavor profiles in terms of, uh, oh yeah, I've tasted this heavy bodied, full bodied from, from like whatever it might be. And I've tasted this bright, uh, like clean kind of coffee, whatever it might, whatever grinder it's from, these are familiar. But when I tasted this, it's just like there's a texture to it that's, uh, that I didn't expect after tasting these two especially, but just in general, especially from hand grinders and, and certainly not from a mignon. I've never had that sort of texture. So um, I, obviously that's what made me guess that this was the uh, Pietro, but uh, really, really impressive. I'm really impressed. Yeah. Oh man, even still that last little bit. Incredible. Incredible. That was actually really good. 
All right, uh, let's talk about its limitations now. While the Fiat and Zato Pietro has many strengths, there are a few limitations to consider. Firstly, it's quite bulky and large. That goes without saying. It's about 1.6 kilograms, which makes it less ideal for travel and on-the-go use. Additionally, the espresso grinding range, it's somewhat limited. Only from my own experience, in dialing in, that scope of fine tuning is usually down to one or two grind settings, with every setting either side of that just being off the radar for my target recipe. And whilst it does offer consistent high quality grinding, there's no doubt about it, is it significantly better than other hand grinders in terms of its flavor performance? That's a difficult one to answer and very subjective, but I have been extremely pleased with the results in the espresso brewing and am confident that flavor profile will carry through to filter brewing as well. But at this price point, it's an extremely expensive hand grinder, where in reality, it is a manual grinder, not a hand grinder for the bench. Plus at this stage, Fia and Zato have not stated whether the pro burrs are interchangeable with these burr sets. So at this point, you have to decide which burrs you want and kind of stick with them, which is a tough pill to swallow for this price point. Do know though, that whichever burr set you get, they will do espresso and filter brewing. That's about it. Let's now take a look at cleaning. To break the grinder down, you simply need to pop out the handle and let it swing to the six o'clock position. Whilst pressing on the button that was found underneath the crank handle, and with this pressed in, turn the whole crank arm anti-clockwise and then pull it out, and it should release from the body of the grinder here. From here, you'll have full access to the burr chamber and the burrs, and then you can give it a full cleanup inside. When it comes to replacing the handle, you wanna hold that little button in and then move the burr carrier until it clicks into position. Then starting at around the 10 p.m. position, hold that button in and press it inwards. Now it might take a few goes to get in, but it should slide nice and into the body and then rotate that whole crank arm clockwise back to the six o'clock position before releasing the button. It feels a little bit awkward the first time you do it, but you do get used to it and you're done. Whilst it is hard to say whether the Fiorenzato Pietro flat burr grinder will gain widespread traction or hype as a superior hand grinder, it certainly lays the groundwork for future iterations that might build upon its strengths and address its limitations. However, it is still a great start in terms of a flat burr manual hand grinder, and it remains to be seen if it will be able to compete with other already established hand grinders on the market right now. Nevertheless, it's exciting to see Fia and Zato branching out into the manual grinder space, and we certainly look forward to what they come up with next. So thank you so much for watching this review. If you've used this grinder before, then certainly we would love to hear about your experiences in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to like this video, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. And if you're interested in learning more about coffee and coffee equipment, be sure to check out our website and follow us on social media. Thanks for watching the end of this video, and we'll see you in the next one.